Welcome to this service at Faith and Victory Church. This is the place to come to receive your miracle from God. Now, let's join our service already in progress. We're preaching on the love of God. Hallelujah. How many know God loves you? Well, two of you know it. Now, I'm going, to make a, I'm going to make some opening statements here, and then we're going to move on. One of the reasons that certain messages appeal to people so much, like what we call the hyper grace, some of the extreme righteousness teaching is, people want to feel love. They don't want to be condemned. They don't want to be beat up or whatever. And uh, so sometimes um, we, over, we overemphasize something in a, in a way that becomes out of balance with the Word of God. But the reason that, that people gravitate to it so much is they like the sound of being loved. Now, you can have a loving God who doesn't put up with junk at the same time. All right? And, and the reason is God doesn't want you doing things because it, it violates union with Him. And union with Him is the only way you're going to have perfect peace. Okay? So the sin of the world violates that harmony with him. And in him is where the peace is found. And in him alone. Him and him alone is where the true love is found. Uh, you, have, you have girls who didn't have a good relationship with their daddy, so they go out and they're, they're giving themselves to all kind of men because they're looking for love. They don't know this. They, they just, they're just looking to be accepted and to be loved. And they don't know that guy is just using them for the moment and be gone tomorrow. You know, he doesn't care about them. So they're, they're looking for something. People are looking. God loves people. Amen. Now, in God's love for people, even though he demands holiness and righteousness, he makes provision so that we can have those things. Amen. So we, we got to get back to loving people. Amen. I, I shared in Winston this morning. You know what? Now, we, we just came out of 9-11 again, the 14th anniversary of 9-11. That stirs a lot of feelings. It stirs a lot of feelings. Do you know Pearl Harbor stirred a lot of feelings in people for a lot of years towards Japanese? That went over big. See, um, we, I was substituting at Wesleyan on, on Friday, and it was 9-11, and uh, the principal for the middle school was saying, that, you know, how many of y'all were born before September 11th, uh, 2001? And only people in the eighth grade were, were born this from there on down. So that's the last class in the middle school I had that was born before 9-11. And I turned to uh, Coach Blakeney, or Coach B, or Mo. They have all kinds of names for him. I said, Pearl Harbor was our 9-11. We were born after Pearl Harbor. It was history to us. We, we, we heard from our parents. And we heard, you know, the devastation. We watched the movies. And it was, you know, that was our 9-11 as, as children because it was a historical fact. We didn't live through it. 9-11 is our father's generation's Pearl Harbor to us. We lived through it. We watched it happen. And a lot of uh, uh, feelings, animosity, hatred, zealous hatred for all Muslims. Listen, I, I'm not stupid. Okay, I don't believe, I don't think, turn my back, let them do whatever they want to do, have Sharia, Sharia, Sharia law, I mean, you know, all that, I, I'm no, 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 no. But you know what? Jesus Christ died for every Muslim on the planet. Amen. Every person that calls Muhammad their God, Jesus died for them. And they just had, what, what, what church, John Greenwald was somewhere, they had 300 people, 300 Muslims got saved. Came to a church. Tim Kilstrom, a couple of years ago, was in Turkey. They've been going in and ministering to Muslims, and they're getting them born again and baptizing them. And we're talking about the love of God. This is real close to home, because there's a lot of feelings about that. No, I don't, I, I'm not going to turn my back. I'm not going to act stupid and say, come on in and just take over our country. But at the same time, I have a responsibility. You have a responsibility to be light to them. Because if we can snatch their soul from hell, we've redeemed somebody from going to hell. God loves them too. That went over big. I know, I just, cause we, because it's so real to us. See, if I said love the Japanese, you say, oh, yeah, that was a long time ago. We got to love them. Yeah. Yeah. Go back and talk to some old salt who fought in World War II and saw the stuff they saw. And you might get some of the same feelings you've got. 
Let me say this. It's not of God. I need a choir up here. Hallelujah. We have, we have to be people. You can't love people that you like. You can't just love wayward white American Christians. Or wayward black American Christians. That are not serving God. You just can't, can't love them. You got to love the people that, that hate God. Because why? There's a spirit called the spirit of disobedience working in them. And we, as the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, remember Jesus came to seek and save that which was lost. Well, thank you. We'll see you tonight. I think I said all I can say that you can handle in one service. Boy, I mean, the air just got sucked out of this room. Is it? Can somebody cool it off in here? Is that running? That one's running. Is that one running? No. I need that one running. That one's got the air. It comes out right there and falls on my head. All right. Isn't it amazing how, much, how, how the love of God works until it comes to get something that we... That's where we have to, that's where we have to make adjustments. We have to make adjustments. We don't want to become ineffective and inept in our ministry. You know, this, we're talking about Love Week at the end of the month. We're going, there, going out and going downtown, you know, they're doing different things. This is, all, this is just to go love on folk. Well, if they don't come to our church, they probably won't. And, and you know, because there are probably going to be people, people reach, reaching that, that won't be coming to our church. But you know what? That's okay. I said, that's okay. We still need to love on them. I said, we still need to love on them. What if they get mad at us for bringing them food? You just got to go love on them. I had a guy cuss me out one time witnessing to him. Didn't want to hear a thing I said. Well, Jesus still loves you. That's how I was by then. I was just crazy, you know. <laughs> Hallelujah. Jesus on the cross, as they spit on him, as they railed against him, as they mocked him, looked at those people and said, forgive them. For what? They know not what they do. He didn't say, cook them! And he could have. How many remember that old church song? He could have called 10,000 angels. You know? He could have taken them off the cross and he could have walked right off of and said, forget you bunch. You're going to treat me like this and I've come to save you? I've come to redeem you and send the angels and let's just cook them on the spot, Father. We're out of here. We'll just go start a new planet somewhere. Could have done it. Hallelujah. Well, and on that note, let's look over into Ephesians, the second chapter. And I know that wouldn't make, make me very popular anywhere right now. But you know what? It's still the truth. I said it's still the truth. I'm, I am not a supporter of Islam. I'm not a supporter of radical Islam. I'm not a supporter of those who want to cut your heads off. I'm not a supporter of those who persecute Christians. But I do know this. We're told to go preach the gospel to every creature. Amen. I said amen. Amen. The listen, listen. Do you know who Paul was? Before he was Paul, he was Saul. He was the Jewish terrorist. He was going and catching Christians and bringing them to be fed to lions. He was a terror. It became Paul, the preacher of righteousness. Amen. I mean, the church had a little bit, you know, they're like, well, I don't trust him. And they, and they had to have the witness of others to say, yeah, he, he's, 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 he's been, he got saved. Ephesians chapter 2. And you, I'm going to leave out happy quick, and it's not there in the Greek of that, in this verse. It's later on, but it's not here. The reason is he's setting, he's setting up and establishing a point here. You who were dead in trespasses and sins, please raise your hand. Because you know who that is? You. Everybody say me. Hallelujah. 
wherein in time past you walk according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh, where? In the children of disobedience, among whom also we all, everybody say we all. We all. And somebody say all means all. all. Hallelujah. Had our lifestyle or manner of life um, in times past in what? The lust of the flesh. Fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind. And were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. Stop right there. Paul has established a thesis. What's that? We were all sinners. We were all lost. We were all governed by our flesh, by the desires of our flesh and of our mind. We were carnal. We were anti-God. Are you here? I said, are you here? And Paul said, and you. So he's talking to you. So he's talking to me. What's his antithesis? But God. But God is what? Who is rich in mercy. Oh, thank God for the mercy of God. Does not say, listen, we know there's judgment, but he's rich in mercy. He's not rich in judgment. Judgment comes by course of necessity, not because God's full of judgment. God's rich in mercy. Well, say, Pastor, you've been talking to us about, you can't, listen, listen, there's, you, you, there's two sides of this whole thing. There's a side where God's, you know, God's mercy, and then you got people who want to, have to kind of take that and make it where they can get us to do anything. There's the other side of here, you can't do it, can't get away with it. Ephesians 1, 2, 3, and Ephesians 4, 5, and 6. There's two sides. Okay? The fact is, God tells you not to do things because things happen because of it. And the reason he told you not to do things is because he loves you. He tells people don't, don't steal. Well, one reason is somebody might shoot you. You know, don't do certain things. Why? It can cost you in the long run. It's because he loves you, not because he wants, doesn't want you to have fun. But, uh, but God is the God of love. Amen. Now, we said this before, God is love. You cannot reverse that. The Greek language, the Greek structure will not let you go love as God. The way it is in the Greek and the way that the, the structure of the language is, you can't reverse it. Because I've seen people say, well, you know, love is God. No, that's not, that's, that's inaccurate. That's theologically, is ecclesiastically inaccurate. You can't do it in the language. Okay? And you just can't reverse it that way. So you can't go, it's, it's, I've got love out there. That's God there. No, doesn't work that way. Sorry. You're, 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 mis, you're misconstruing the language. And, uh, you know, I've told you, you need to go study it for yourself. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Can I get a mop on aisle three? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Ever, anybody ever, ever heard that in the store? And so he says here, he establishes, we were, we, were, we were given to that. We were by nature the children of the wrath, even as others. He goes, but God. I like but gods. That is, that's, a, a, that's, that's a statement, not multiple gods, but statements of but God. I love, I love it when there's something set out there that I'm lost without hope, without, work, uh, without help in this world. And then there's a but, there's a but God. Either insinuated or implied or actually stated. In the midst of the worst things in life, we can look at that and go, oh, oh Lord, what are we going to do? And then there's a but God. I said, there's a but God. Amen? But God, listen to this, who is rich in mercy. Why? For his great love wherewith he loved us. Now, God's mercy, God has mercy because he loves us. Now, I can tell you, and I know you're going to get mad at me now. When mercy is not extended, it's because you don't love the person. When you're not willing to extend mercy, it's because you don't love. Go ahead. I said, go ahead. Okay. Okay, that's, that's kind of like me writing on the ground with Jesus. Hello? He, without sin, cast the first stone. When you're not ever willing to extend mercy. Now, I know sometimes you, things have to be dealt with in certain ways. And, you know, as pastors, you've got to do things sometimes. And, you know, in, in, in situations of life, you've got to do certain things. But if you're not willing to extend mercy, you don't love. Amen. See, God, because of his great love, wherewith he loved us, for he's rich in mercy. He has great mercy because he loves us. 
That's why when you see videos of homosexuals in San Francisco dressed up like uh, with none habits on, with bras and panties on, standing out there, the homos, not, not women, but men, going, Father, Son, Holy Ghost, who do we appreciate most? Jesus, Je and mocking God. The reason they're not cooked on the spot is mercy. I said, there have been a, there have been a lot of people who've walked the planet who if God had just been the God of judgment only, they'd have been cooked and we would have never known about them. And I can guarantee you if somebody was doing that and a lightning came down and cooked them on the spot, you'd never see it on television again. That'd be the end of it. See, God's not a God of judgment. He is not judgment. He is love. Yeah. Judgment does come out of necessity. We know that. It's in the Bible. There's things in there about judgment. So we're not going to say God doesn't judge. But I am telling you, <clears throat> he loves us, therefore he extends mercy to us. My spirit will not always strive with man. Meaning what? He's going to strive as long as he can. Remember Ephraim, Ephraim, um, I forget how it's terminology, but he, he claved to his idols. He rejected God and claved to his idols. You know? And God had to leave him to his idols. That wasn't because he wanted to. He, he, his mercy extended and extended and extended until it just had, it, it couldn't be extended anymore because they kept rejecting it. Now God knows who will eventually reject him to the point that they will never accept him. But he will strive with them until that last moment. I said God will strive with them until the very last moment before he releases them. Why? Because he loves them. Jesus died for them. I, was, I remember Dad Hagen telling a story about uh, a brother-in-law who left his, left his wife and uh, his sister, left her sister, left her kids, didn't have them, they weren't clothed, weren't fed right. He'd go and witness to them, try to minister to them. And he said, Ken, I know you're right. I know you're right. I know you're right. But I'm not going to do anything about it. He even told him one time, he said, yeah, I know it. I know it. I know it. I'm an infidel. And, I, and I'm, I'm living with a slut. But I'm not going to do anything about it. He'd pray and pray and pray and pray and pray. And he'd call out to God and he'd go visit him. And, and then he was in prayer one time and God said, get up from there. Don't ever call his name before my throne again. Just as Ephraim had cle claved to his idols. What? Mercy. See, God's so full of mercy. God let, I mean, he, he went and, Ken, and Brother Hagin went and went and went. And he called his name and he ministered. And the Spirit of God worked with him or worked with him because he loved him. God doesn't send anybody to hell. People go because they reject salvation. They reject the plan of God. They reject the love of God. But let me tell you, there will be tears in heaven and it won't be you crying. It'll be God because people rejected his plan. They rejected his love. They rejected his mercy. He did everything that could be done to save them. And they rejected it. Now, come back over here. God loves people. Even when we were dead. He says here, he said, but God is rich in our mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us. Even when we were dead in our in sins hath quickened us together. That's why it's not in verse 1. Because you've got to establish the thesis, you're all lost there. Verse 5 comes back and says, verse 4, or four 5 comes back and says that even when you were dead in sins, he made you alive together with Christ and raised you up together with Christ. By grace are you saved and hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Why? Then in the ages to come, he, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness towards us through Christ Jesus. For by grace are you saved through faith that not of yourselves is the gift of God. We are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus under good works, which God hath before ordained you should walk in them. So here we have it. God sees us lost in our sin, alienated from him, children of disobedient. And even in that state, he sent Jesus. Now what, what did Jesus say in one place? He said, he said, what reward have you if you do good to them to do good for you? Hello? Penny comes to church, brings Melanie a bag of cookies. Her favorite cookies. 
It didn't take long to get an amen out of that one. <laughs> Hallelujah. And Melanie just goes to, Mel, goes, to, goes to her and says, I love you, Penny. You're such a wonderful sister in the Lord. But somebody else comes in and sits down. And Melanie comes in and sits down. And they get up and move. And Melanie goes there and sits down something near them again. They say, get up and move. She finally says, are you a Christian? Yeah, I'm a Christian, but I hate black people. Wait a second now. Now, we know they're wrong. We know that you can't love your brother and, and love God. But what's Melanie going to do? Now, it was easy to love Penny, wasn't it? She bought you cookies, your favorite kind. But here you got the, the redneck honky in here hating black people. We done, we done got, we got some mess now, haven't we? Are you going to love them? You're not going to love them. All right? She's not going to love them. She's going to love them because she's going to do what the Bible says. Because Jeff's going to take her home and say, you, now you're going to do what this says. Why? Because we're, God, we're, we're like God. Remember, they spit on Jesus. They beat him. They mocked him on the cross. And he said, forgive them. They don't know what they do. Now, let me say something. The racist spirit is a spirit of the children of disobedience. It's a devil. Now, they may not be demon-possessed, but it's a demon spirit in operation that causes people. There's just no natural reason not to like somebody just because they got a different color skin. There's just no reason. Hello? You put a bunch of, uh, of white kids and black kids and Hispanic kids and, and, and Asian kids in a room together, and don't, don't, listen, get, and, and mom and daddy hadn't said anything to them, and they're all buddies. Now they might, and they'll be sitting around talking, why is your skin so light? Yeah. Yeah. Mine's darker than that. Yeah. And they'll be going, cool. <laughs> Look at him, he's yellow. Man, you ain't like either one of us. And they'll all think it's cool. Yeah. But let them get up a little bit of age, and the spirit of disobedience take control of their life, and what happens? I don't even want to sit in the same chair as you because you, you, you got difficult. Somehow it rubbed off on my, on my chair. Now listen, we could all sit down here. We could, we could open, get an open forum, sit in a circle, and talk about what families and people older than you said when you were a kid that you overheard that was racist against somebody else. Now you all know it. I, I've heard some stuff. Okay? I'm telling you, I've heard some stuff. I love family members, but I don't agree with them. The love of God. Listen, when I was, when I was in high school, it, it wasn't, I mean, we, we, we were friends. Played sports together. Friends on Facebook today. Hello? Played sports together. Did stuff together. Go, go, go to class reunion. It's not like, oh, you're one of the black people that was in my school. No. We went to school together. We're classmates. You know? It's not a weird thing. See, see when, you, when, when you break the spirit of disobedience off of you, you don't look at things the same way. Okay? But see, we've we, we got to understand that as Christians, we have to walk in the same kind of love. Even when we were dead in our sins and our rebellion against God and our en enmity against God, he saved us. Amen? Listen, my wife, that, uh, a year ago at community college, had a student come in. And she knew she didn't like her. Girl made sure she knew she didn't like her. And finally, one day after about a couple weeks of class, she heard her, she was near her, and she heard her telling some other student, she said, I just don't like white people. So my wife said, okay, that's fine. You are my mission. <laughs> I'm going to win you before this semester is over. I mean, she would come to her, and she, she, she had attitude. I mean, you know, the, the chewing and popping the gum attitude in your face kind of stuff. Well, you just ain't teaching me right. She would blame her for all of her failures. You know, by the end of that semester, that girl had changed. And that girl was calling her Miss Taylor and treating her with kind. Because my wife made it a mission to love on her and to work and get through her mess. And she actually passed. Amen. 
But she said, uh-uh, you ain't, you ain't winning this one, devil. I mean, you know, I hate white people. Well, that's kind of inaccurate because she's part, mostly Cherokee. But anyway, still, she, she could have gotten mad and said, okay, that's what I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do. You ain't going to pass nothing in my class. You ain't going to make it in my class. As a matter of fact, when you come to me for help, I ain't even going to help you. I'm just going to, I'm going to, you're going to have that kind of attitude. I'm going to stick it to you. She could have because she was the teacher. She had the power to, to, to sink that girl. But she chose the winner. Why? Because, see, it's a spirit doing that. Now, you understand, I'm not saying you're demon-possessed, but there's a spirit behind all that. There's a spirit walking behind that. Amen? Are you here? Spirits cause us not to do what God wants us to do. Gets us out of the love of God. Are we gonna reach, if we, we're not going to reach cities with hate. Well, pastor, you said homosexuality is wrong. You're a hate monger. No, I'm not. It'll kill them. You'll go to hell. I love you, so I'm willing to tell you. But we've got, we've got to get back to being people of love, people of mercy. Just like he, when his great love, wherewith he loved us. Come on now. Are you here? I'll never forget uh, the story of a preacher. He was, uh, there was a, they were having a meeting. And um, in the meeting, you know, people were sitting around the table. And, and, and one of the men that was sitting at the table, this, these are all Christians, all sitting there together, uh, all different races, predominantly, you know, white and black. Um, you know, certain parts of the country, if you go to, it would be predominantly Asian and white or, you know, other parts, Mexican and white or Latino and white. Then others, it's, it's, it's black and white. You know, the, the different, different regions of the country have a higher ratio mix of the different races just because way people have immigrated and different things. So, you know. Um, we have that. So this, this particular place was, was in the south, and uh, they were having a meeting, and, um, and, and somebody was a visiting ministry or, or, or Christian, and the guy running it said, uh, you see that man over there? He's sitting between two black gentlemen. And uh, he said, yeah. He said he's the former Grand Imperial Wizard of the KKK, but he got born again. And this is a man who, who, who hated black people. Why? Because the spirit of disobedience worked in him. But somebody went and ministered to him, got him saved, and now he's not walking around saying, well, I can't, I'm saved, but I can't do it. He's sitting between people that he formerly hated, and now they're in fellowship. Because the love of God changes us. I said the love of God changes us. We're no longer the same. Are you here? So pastors, if you're preaching racism from your church, if you're white, black, Hispanic, Latino, Asian, whatever you are, if you're telling that one race is better than the other, you're a liar, and you need to get out of the pulpit. You need to stop preaching that garbage. You need to stop saying that somebody owes you something because of what they did. I don't know. I'm, listen, white, black, it doesn't matter. If, uh, you know, if the Japanese pastors are saying you white people owe us because of uh, World War II, or if the, you know, Muslims who get saved come into a church and they're Arabic, and they're, they're Arabic Christians living in a, in a city, you know, and, and we're saying you owe us because you, you bombed our World Trade Towers, I am telling you we have got to have the reconciliation of the love of God in the church. Or we're not going to win the battle. I said, we're not going to win the battle. So we need to stop standing in our pulpits dividing ourselves based on our race and get back to loving one another. Hello? Well, have you ever been tre treated wrong, Pastor Eddie? If you, you're, listen, I was sitting in church one time in, in, our, in Greenville, and, and, and one of the East Carolina students' mom had come. And it was an African-American girl. She, she loved our church because it was a Holy Ghost church flowing in spirit. And her mom got up and going to try to show us all how to preach and came up and grabbed me and said, and white people don't know how to worship the Lord. I said, they, I'm thinking, lady, I dance with the best of them. I mean, just grabbed me and rubbed off and white people don't know how to preach. I, 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 that was racist. I said, that was racist. Tell me because I'm white, I can't worship God. That's, that was just as racist as anything I could have said to her. So I've, I know what it feels like. I mean, in front of the whole church. You feel, like, you feel like an idiot. I can't do it like you do it, but you know, I can worship God. You know? That spirit gets into the church, and then we get the churches starting to divide up, and then we start, you know, and, and, and you know, politics has not helped anything in the past 20, 15, 20 years. 
I mean, the church has gotten so politicized that we're forgetting that we need to be praying. Yeah. Amen. <coughs> Hello. Yeah. And we need to be praying the right things, and we need to be voting according to conscience, not according to anything else. Now, I'm telling you, if, if the political party that I'm affiliated with puts a, a pro-homosexual, pro-abortion candidate, and they win, I ain't voting for them. I don't give a rip. Why? My conscience won't allow me to do it. I don't care. Well, the other party, you know, if we don't vote for him, we're going to get the other party's guy. Well, we'll, just all, we'll all have to suffer the consequences because people rejoice when the righteous reign. We need to get back to saying, God, we have to, we have, to have the right people in leadership. We have to pray instead of, you know, just fighting against whoever. Now, the past 12 years, see, 8, 12, 14 years, we've been so polarized that, that when one party's in, everybody just fights him. When the other party's in, everybody just fights them. And all we do is fight. Now, I understand with the people, but the church should be on our knees. And we should know that our nation's not in a good place. And we should be praying and calling out to God and saying, God, heal our land. If my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and I will heal their land. <clears throat> but the church isn't doing it because we're not walking in love one with another. We won't listen to one another. Hallelujah. Boy, that, that had angelic bouncing all around the room. Anyway, I don't know why I'm all over there. Well, I do. Because, see, we, we were lost without God, without hope and sin. We were lost in devastation, you know. <clears throat> and we have allowed ourselves to be drawn into a battle that we're no longer using the weapons of our warfare, which are not carnal. We're fighting back carnally. We've gotten carnal in our attacks. We're no longer fighting in prayer. We're no longer taking authority. Because, you know, we may have prayed for, but for election. We didn't get what we thought we should get. And we got disappointed. And so now we're just going to go uh, run our mouth about it. Church, we, Satan wants to shut the door to prayer in the church. Stop praying for your man and start praying for God's man. Stop praying that you want it your way. Stop praying for God's way. Amen. We have, we, have, we have stopped doing what we're supposed to do. You're not going to win the battle fighting in the flesh. And the church isn't going to be triumphant until we walk in love one with another. I'm not talking about putting up with everything that everybody says. I am talking about having a love one for another instead of angry and mad, ticked off all the time. Come on now. Well, it's 12.02, and I think y'all are just fed up with listening to this. No, this is the heart. This, listen, if we cannot walk in love, how can you love your brother? How can you say you love God who you cannot see and hate your brother whom you can see? How can you say it? You know, the Bible says he that hates his brother is a liar. If you say you're a Christian and you hate your brother, you're a liar. That went over good. We're still going to preach righteousness. We're still going to teach truth. We're still going to teach holiness. It has nothing to do with any of those things. The fact is, we need to teach things in love. You speak the truth in love. You're lost without hope, without God in this world. And I'm telling you, because I love you and I want you to go to heaven. I don't want you to go to hell. I'm not telling you because I hate you and I'm mad, you know, and angry about your sin. I'm, I'm telling you so you won't go to hell. And if you'll receive Jesus, you won't go to hell. Hallelujah. So we're coming back to being lovers of God and demonstration of the love of God. Yeah, but I'm so mad about something. Well, you're going to have to get over your anger. Because if your anger causes you to sin, you're, in, you're out of harmony with God. Be angry and sin not. The Bible says. What do you mean be angry and sin not? You, listen, 9-11 made me, made me bad. Rightfully so. 
But I can't sin by refusing to love those whom God loves because I'm angry. Then I've entered into sin. Can I have a real big long say lie? How are we going to reach people? I mean, you'll be going to witness to people. Look, I don't really give a rip if you see Jesus or not, but I'm going to tell you about him. I really want you to go to hell. But here you go, pal. Jesus died for you. He sent me, I'm supposed to tell you. So I'm telling you, I really don't want you to receive him, Jonah. Jonah. The parallel is God sent, was going to send Jonah to Nineveh. And he didn't like the folks in Nineveh. As a matter of fact, he was ticked off with them. Because they were sinful, they were rebellious, they were anti-God. And God said for him to go preach to them. That's how he got Jonah in the well's belly. Because they threw him overboard. He got, and then after three days, he got spit up on the shore. And he went and preached. And they got saved. And he got mad. He got mad that they turned from God. They get saved. They, you know, in Old Testament terminology, they would have been saved, okay? Just, just not, not true New Testament salvation. But they turned from their sin and repented. And he got mad. Hello? How many Christians have we got like that right now? Well, I'll, I'll tell them he loves them, but I really hope they go to hell. Can bitter water or sweet water proceed out of the same fountain? Can an olive tree bear figs? Hello? God demands, listen, God demands we walk in love. Let me say this. I've had some, we've had some stuff happen here in the past couple, three years where people have gotten mad with me. If they had just walked in love, they would still be here. Now they say they walked, they did not walk in love. Had they walked in love, they would have been here. They wouldn't have left. They wouldn't have walked out the door. But they, got, they, they started up some mess and got mad with me over something. Usually something stupid. Me. Not, not somebody else. But they weren't mad with brother or sister. So they were mad with me. I got one person left the church 10 years ago, 12 years ago. And they told me. They said, I was so mad with you. I said, what for? They said, I don't know. They still don't know why. I'm just, I'm mad with you. What did I do? I mean, I still go, we still go fellowship. I still go over there and do stuff for them and help them do stuff. But they're telling me, mad with you. But why? I don't know why. Clue, walk in love. I said, you walk in love then. There's no justification for you leaving other than you were mad with me and you were mad with me. You don't know why you were mad with me. You ever got mad with somebody and really don't know why you got mad with them? I mean, in the natural, just, just in the natural, just got mad with somebody. Brother Buddy Harrison told the story one time. He was, he was working, and uh, they got a new supervisor. And they, the scuttlebutt was he was a jerk. He said the guy walks out on the de- dock for the very first day he's working in a shipping dock. And he looked at him and went, that guy's a jerk. Hadn't he said a word to him? Just walked out, he's a jerk. That's a spirit. That's the spirit of disobedience. That's prejudging people based on nothing other than you don't even have a, you don't have a basis for it. Right. I'm mad with you, pastors. Why? Can I fix it? I mean, if you're mad with me, maybe I can do something to fix it. Right. I don't know, but I'm mad with you. Really? Yeah, I'm mad. Why? I don't know. I'm mad. I'm leaving the church. They left. This is, this is not right. This is the wrong spirit. Church splits take place. Because somebody did something that somebody didn't like. And they got mad about it. And everybody chooses sides. And that's because they've got family members and all this stuff. And, you know. Remember that old song? How many remember that old song? Bill, I know Brother Bill remembers it. Old Southern Gospel song called Excuses. Excuses, excuses. You hear them every day. The devil will supply them and from church will stay away. 
When people come to know the Lord, the devil always loses. So to keep them folks away from church, he offers them excuses. And then they start talking about all the different excuses. And the last was always this. Well, he didn't even shake my hand. One was upset because the preacher didn't shake her hand. Well, grow up and go shake some people's hand and tell them you're glad to see them in church. Remember that song, Brother Bill? Excuses, excuses, you hear them every day. Devil will supply them if church will stay away. When people come to know the Lord, the devil always loses. So to keep them folks away from church, he offers them excuses. Well, the sermon's too short. Why, well, it's way too long. You get that? You have somebody walking out, that's the shortest sermon, that's too short. Had somebody walking out, oh, that's way too long. Pastor Charles Cowan, we just had him over at Rainbow Thing. <clears throat> I've been pastoring a pastor successful church in Nashville for uh, 35 years. He said recently somebody came in and looked at him and said, you know, if you want this church to grow and you want to, do it, want to succeed, you're going to have to change your worship. Really? Bye, bye, Miss America. Anyway. Yeah, everybody's got an opinion. People get mad over some of the dumbest stuff. I've heard of church splits over the color of the carpet. Now, I'm not joking. I'm as serious as I can be. People split the church because they didn't, because one group voted and they got, they got the certain color carpet and they didn't like it. They packed up and left. We had a big church down in Greenville. And it was called Trinity Free Will Baptist. They believed in the Trinity. And they got, something got going on down there. They got, got the fighting and the fussing and the carrying on. They split. And the split group started a church called Unity Free Will Baptist. I am not joking. Yeah. Then they was running around, running around with one another, having adultery and affairs going on in there. I know. I know some folk in there that were doing it. Yeah, unity. They, were, they, they left the Trinity so they could be in unity. All over stupid stuff. We've got to learn to walk in love in the church, within, within our church, with other churches. Hello? I've got pastors that got churches that are bigger than ours, that are doing, you know, they've got all kinds of people over there, you know? But you know what? When, when, when there's something going on that they need, we pray for them, we love on them, we have fellowship with them. Amen. Got a bunch of people over, there, people over there that don't like me, went over there. But we still love them. We're going to love on them. Amen. We want them to be successful and blessed. Why? Because they're, they're helping people. So we want them blessed. Amen. I said amen. They help people that I can't help. They praise God. We want them blessed. Amen. So we're going to walk in love. We're going to walk in love. You've got to be able to love folk. Folk. You've got to be able to. I've had people in this church who couldn't stand one another. Sit on one, would sit on a different side of the church because they wouldn't want to be around somebody else. Shame on you. And you're going to talk about how the Lord talks to you and gives you wisdom and revelation. Don't even make me choke. God's talking to you right and left and you can't even walk in love with somebody in the same building. Oh, give them. I ain't going to speak in tongues, but I ain't going to say anything else either. <laughs> Make me mad. That didn't mean you, it means you've got all the things. Now, let me tell you, I'm trying to look around. Joe. Now, me and Joe don't have a lot in common. Joe likes to hunt. I don't like to hunt. Joe likes to fish. I don't like to fish. Joe goes spend a whole lot of money on, on camo. Shells, getting the stand right, and putting the salt lick out, I wouldn't spend a penny. Because it has, but you know what? He's my brother in the Lord. I'm going to love on him. All right? Now, I've got probably a little bit more in common with Dick because at least we can talk about computer programming. All right? Bill, we can talk about computer programming. So the programmers, we can sit and talk about programming. You know? Now, Benny, I love Brother Benny. But I'll, I'll bet you Benny doesn't, doesn't really want to go whitewater rafting this weekend. Do you? Oh, you love? Oh, I didn't know that, Benny. This guy, I know somebody to go with. Hallelujah. I didn't know Benny liked whitewater raft. 
That's a new one on me. I didn't know that. See, I just found out today that Benny likes white water rafting. I like white water rafting. Now, we used to have some ladies in the church who didn't like it, didn't like me being on the same boat river with them either. Well, look, when you come out with your hair blow dried and your eyeliner and makeup on and your lipstick on and all your, your foundation and everything on, and you're going white water rafting, I felt it was my duty. My call as the pastor to fix that. So the first chance we got, we got a bell bucket. It hit the other raft with water. Now you don't have to worry about going into the rapids. You can go ahead and have fun. Did you, pastor? We took, the rain of people would even go with me. Because we took, we took a crowd out there, and they were on there, and they are being all weenie-fied and all this stuff and sissy-fied. So we turned to the guy, me and somebody else who knew how to raft. I said, can we flip this? He said, yeah. He said, he said I'll tell you, to kind of let you know ahead of time what rapid it is. He said, and I'll tell you what to do. So we, we switched, made them get up front. Well, Yeah. I'm telling my secrets. So none of you will ever go ratchet with me. He says, this one. He says, now look, when I say it, shift as far back as you can and dig your paddle in. We hit that rapid. We, me and the other guy slid to the back, dug our paddle in, and the raft went. And it was hilarious because you watched him go, shkaboom, shkaboom, shkaboom. <laughs> and the rapid just went, shbloop. <laughs> Put us all in the water. I'm honoring you like that. See, I have been sent by God to test your love walk. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, Brother Benny, you still want to go with me? Okay. Yeah. Anybody else want to go? Nathan? No, oh, you have me flip. Melanie, you're not going? Yeah. They put brass on, put vest on, put helmets on. Cast ready to go. No, we're not. Listen, that's, that's not white water ratchet. That's a white water expedition. They put outboard motors on them to, go, go, to guide the boats. I'm not joking you. Well, Grand Canyon, because it's, the water's so heavy and so fast, they put outboard motors on to control, not your, your paddles. You had the paddles for looks. They used the motor to guide the boat raft. Well, now we're talking about the love of God. But I got on that talking about you know, we have different likes, we have different tastes, we have different things. We're not going to have everybody in the church that likes the same thing. You're not going to come to church with a group of people, everybody in the whole church likes the same thing. We're going to be different. We have different tastes, we have different interests. But one thing is when we walk through that door, we have a uniqueness called the body of Christ. We're brothers, one with, brothers and sisters one of another. We're the same family. Now we used to have a lady here um, a number of years ago, some of y'all remember, Philip and Margaret Earls. Okay? And um, Philip was, they were sitting around talking to us with Howard and Janelle one day, and they were talking to us about, they had just come from a family reunion, and Philip's standing there going, man, I ain't never seen anything like that in my life. We're talking about it. Said, we said, well, we're sitting out there at that family reunion, all got their t-shirts on, such and such family. It wasn't the Earls, it was her family. And all these white people started driving up. They were African American. And one, one car drove up, another car drove up. They all started getting there, everybody started going, hey, hey, hey! And Philip turned to her and said, who are them white people? She said, they're my cousins. When they all got there, they were family. You understand what I'm saying? It didn't matter if they were white or they were black. They were family. You know, he was sitting there going, what the white people doing at the reunion? And they were family. And she didn't, just, they're, family, they're my cousins. And they're all just loving on one another because fa they were family. So when we walk in these doors, you might be a computer programmer. You might be uh, a, um, a detailer in cars. You might drive buses. You might um, you know, work in an office. You might be a um, uh, system analyst. You might drive a tractor trailer. You might, you might, whatever you're doing. You might be a furniture repair guy. You might, you might work for a big insurance firm. But when you walk through the door of this building, you're with family. 
We're family. We love one another. Just because I don't have the same interest. I mean, Cap drove up with his car from Oklahoma. And on the back of it is that Doctor Who thing. And I'm thinking, what in the world is that from Doctor Who? No interest to me at all. We can fix that. It's okay, I got this one. So he loves Doctor Who, you know, you know and, and I can't really talk to him about it. There's other things we, we can talk about. We can't talk about Star Wars. All right, Brother Bill. <laughs> Children, behave yourself. You know, but, I mean, I can't go, I can't have fellowship with him. He likes that crazy British sci-fi show. You know? I mean... The kids who want me to watch The Walking Dead. Wish I never opened, I never, wish I never lost saw one. Because I had to all watch all five seasons in a month or something, you know. I kind of like it. They said, you like it, Dad, you like it. Kind of like 24, you know. <laughs> I still won't go that far. This is just, Jack Bauer is his own entity. Okay, we go back. <laughs> We're going to come in here. There are going to be people who come in here from later in life. As we go down the road, there are going to be people coming here that you don't like. They're going to rub you the wrong way every time you get around them. And you're going to have to make it your mission to love them. Oh, yeah. You can't leave the church. And, listen, you, cause you know what? You've got another church there over there, too. What do you mean? They're clones. They're clones, of, they're clones in the spirit. They're all over the place. Wherever you go, they're going to be there. You're going to have to win that battle of walking in love to go forward. We trust that you were blessed by the word of God and the flow of the spirit of God in this service. If you would like to contact us, please write us via email at office at fbc.org or using our mailing address PO Box 7752 Greensboro, North Carolina 27417 If you would like to contribute to our ministry please go to our website at www.fbc.org and click on the Giving Online button Thank you and may God richly bless you for your giving